Hi, I'm Nick Clark, uh, creator of AUD1 uh, Assistive Listing Software, that's AUD1. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be uh, explaining uh, some interesting findings I've had when, when looking at iOS um, input output audio latency. So, what is round trip audio latency? Well, it's a delay between the input and the output sound on the device. Uh, the sound has to come into the microphone and after this it's processed by some electronics to convert it into a digital signal. When it's in a digital form it can then be processed by your software and at the output stage it then has to be converted back into an analog signal uh, which can then be passed to uh, your, your speakers or headphones. Now you want to minimise this delay because any, any delay introduced in a real-time audio application is going to be uh, annoying. If you're speaking, you'll hear a slight delay in your own speech. If you tap a table, for instance, um, you'll, you'll notice that you're not getting the acoustic feedback you expect as quick as you expect. So, so you want this value to be as small as possible. So uh, first up, I'd like to show you um, how this, this works on a, an iPhone 4S. Excuse this, this is my development device. It's a little, little beat up. Um, so the first thing we should do is just load up. Oh, it's already the software's already loaded up, and it's it's on this latency test. Uh, and you can find the latency test. It's under the the tools icon, and then if you swipe one screen to the right, uh, you're presented with this new uh, latency test page. Um, if you just tap the test button, it'll tell you that you need to uh, enable the play mode on the device before you can do this. Um, so so to test latency, it's pretty simple. You just get you get some, whatever headphones you're using, place them fairly close to your iOS device, um, with the volume set to about around 75%, tap the play button, uh, hit the test button, it acquires the data, it says OK, check the results below, um, and you can see that with the default settings, uh, the round trip latency is 523 samples, which at this sampling rate uh, is 11.9 milliseconds. Um, and this is measured by, well, what happens is when you press the test button, there are a, a series of, of pulses sent out uh, through the speaker, mixed in with some noise, and the software then reads in uh, the position of these pulses relative to the pulses it's sent out, and then it can it can deduce how long, how long the sound's taken to go around this complete circuit. Um, you can reduce this latency slightly, um, if we if we put the device in play mode, uh, if we if we use a smaller audio buffer size, so if you go down to sixty four samples instead of the default one twenty eight, um, and then we try uh, testing the latency. Oops, not quite enough uh, uh, sound level there. So I put it in. You'll hear a bit of feedback. Okay, um, and that's about as low as you can go at the moment with um, with the current iOS devices eight point nine uh, milliseconds. Now, obviously, if you if you use a much larger buffer size, perhaps for a very for an older generation iOS device with with less processing power, you might need to use a larger buffer size, probably never up to one thousand twenty four, but you may require a larger buffer size to prevent audio dropouts. But this is going to cost you because when you test the latency, you'll see that um, it's now uh, fifty two point four milliseconds, which which kind of starts making for a bit of an irritating uh, listening experience. Okay, um, here we're going to try a, a different hardware configuration. Here I've got um, some, some Etymotic uh, earbuds that are designed for, uh, designed for use uh, with, with, a, with a mobile phone. So they have an inline microphone uh, built into this adjuster, so you can see a little... Maybe, maybe you can't because the resolution's not high enough. There's a little speck on the back of this uh, volume changer. Um, and something quite interesting, if, if you remember that the, the smallest latency we could squeeze out the system with, with regular headphones was about 8.9 milliseconds. If we, uh, oops, if we set the buffer size down to uh, 64 samples using, using these headphones and then, uh, and then test the latency here, you can see that you actually managed to squeeze another another millisecond out of the device, so we're now in the realm of about 7.9 uh, milliseconds when using an inline microphone. Uh, and this is pretty interesting because this shows you the um, the difference in delay caused by whatever processing is uh, is picking up the sound from the the internal microphone, and whatever internal processing is going on when it's receiving sound from the uh, 
from the uh, the inline microphone, this 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 microphone uh, input through the headphone socket. Um, I wouldn't recommend you use an inline microphone with, with Aud One. These are these are designed for picking up your own voice and not environmental sounds. But it's 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 certainly quite an interesting result for a, an iOS audio nerd like myself. Okay, now for something um, a little different again. Uh, so far we've tried the device's internal microphone and a set of uh, headphones which have an inline microphone. The, the, the third combination that you can, you can use uh, involves uh, an external um, digital to analog converter. So if we insert this, this Tascam device, uh, just check its name what it is, there we go. So yeah, so we have the Tascam iXJ2 uh, connected to the base. If we then plug the headphones in, and place one of the uh, or place the place the microphones connected to the the external digital analog converter into the headphones, and then we check we're still set on sixty four audio buffer samples. Uh, if we enable play and then we test, oh, it's not picking it up. Try that again. Okay. So uh, the measurement that's come out of this is. 11.8 milliseconds. So you, you might expect that with the additional uh, the additional processes and hardware, uh, you might take a small latency hit. Um, but the the benefits of having stereo input to this assistive listening device definitely outweigh the extra millisecond or two uh, latency penalty that you're going to take. Um, the the latency test built into the software is is also pretty sensitive. Um, you, you don't have to shove the, the microphone right into the, the, the headphones uh, that you're using. Uh, and to demonstrate this, you can, actually, you can actually measure the speed of sound using, using the latency tester. So if we enable playback, uh, turn the volume down a bit to stop too much feedback, and we hit test right near the microphone, uh, we've got this 8.9 uh, millisecond figure again that we, we recorded earlier. But if, however, um, if, if I just try this again at a, a, a slight distance, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to hit the button through the video camera. There we go, you can see it's now 9.7 milliseconds. Uh, and if I, if I pull the device further away and retest, uh, you can see this is now up to 11.2 uh, milliseconds and this is just because I've increased the distance between the microphone and the headphones. Uh, you'll notice this value is kind of similar to the, the stereo input hardware I tested which really shows you how how fairly negligible um, these couple of milliseconds extra latency are. So why did I build a latency checker into the software in the first place? Well. Um, it was actually because of, of this device here. This, this is an iPod Touch 5th um, generation. Uh, it's one of the test devices I use uh, whilst developing. And I noticed when, when, when testing the Aud1 software on this uh, that it sounded like there was, there was a greater audio latency. Um, and I wasn't sure if, if, if I was being crazy or, or, if, or if this was actually true. So the only way to really to really find this is to build build some kind of test utility or find a way of actually measuring it. Um, searches on the web revealed fairly little information. There was um, a little bit of information on the Loopy forums. Loopy is, is a, a music application made by a guy called Michael Tyson. It's very good. I recommend you check it out. Um, but 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 some users um, on this forum mentioned that that they were having sort of some some strange perceivable latency problems with the iPod Touch 5th generation. So if we if we uh, use the same headphones that we were using with the iPhone 4S, uh, we'll load up the Order 1 software, okay, that goes straight into the latency test page, uh, check that we've got 64 audio buffer samples, uh, yeah, and then we go across to the, the latency test, uh, enable play, run the test, You can see a rather shocking uh, figure here. So this this was 8.9 milliseconds 
on the uh, iPhone 4S and for some strange reason on, the, on this particular device uh, this value is much higher. Um, I'm currently running, running iOS uh, 6.1.3 on all my devices so whether or not this might change in a future release uh, I'm uncertain but, but it, I mean it's, it's rather odd. Uh, you don't, you don't even get this problem with, with iPads or with even the previous generation, uh, iPod Touch 4th generation, it's just this particular model um, just has this, this rather unacceptable latency value. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, for more information, please check out audioplastic.org or, uh, or go to the audone.com project website. Um, uh, you can contact me also uh, via, via the Order One Facebook page and um, I'm Audio Plastic on Twitter. Uh, thanks for watching.